Hello, friends, and welcome to the first installment this year of my reading to you, chapter books then. All right, so our first book that I'm going to record for you guys is called Ways to Make Sunshine. This book comes highly recommended, and I'm super excited to read it, okay? So without further ado, let's begin. Alright. Ooh, bananas. Can't find the beginning. Ah, here we go. Chapter one. The girl who could be king. I'm a girl with a name a lot like boys have. So when a substitute teacher takes role and calls out Ryan, she looks surprised when I answer. I wish Miss Colby were here. Miss Colby doesn't even need to take role anymore because it's the first day of March and she's been teaching us for six months. So she can tell who's here and who is not just by looking across the room. Ms. Colby always starts the day off with our thumbs up, thumbs down, somewhere in the middle, check-in. This substitute doesn't even do that, any of that. So I don't know, get to show my thumbs up for making perfect scrambled eggs and toast this morning. Here's Ryan. I wonder why Mrs. Colby didn't leave a note for the sub with a list of to-dos and don'ts. Like, don't call Devante, Devante. Call him D. And don't look so shocked when a girl raises her hand when you call out for Ryan. Here I say... Ryan Hart? Here, I say. Oh, sorry. Ryan Hart, the substitute says. She looks at me like she is not sure why I am who I say I am. Yes, my name is Ryan. Oh, she says, pushing up her two big glasses. Brandon, the boy sitting next to me, says she has a boy's name. I roll my eyes at him because no one is talking to him. He needs to mind his own business. I do not have a boy's name. My name is Ryan, and Ryan means king, and that means I am a leader. Okay, uh, please settle down. Settle down, the substitute says, mostly to me and not to Brandon, who thinks he knows it all. Okay, Ryan Hart is here, she says to herself. Then Brandon whispers, and she spells her last name wrong. He laughs at his corny joke. I do not. My name is Ryan Hart, and it's not heart like the muscle. It's H-A-R-T, as in my last name. The substitute teacher walks over to my desk and says, I need you to keep your voice down. I need Brandon to leave me alone. I roll my eyes at Brandon again. Extra roll this time. How? Sorry. But then I remember that mom always tells me how she named me Ryan because she wanted me to feel powerful. To remember I am a leader every time someone calls my name. Dad is always telling me our people come from royalty, that my ancestors lived in Africa and Africa and were kings and queens and inventors and hard workers. Mom tells me their strength is running through my veins. I sit up straight, ignore Brandon, and try to be the leader I am supposed to be. Mom and dad tell me I will keep growing into my name. They say it to my brother who. Be who we named you to be. They tell him whenever he is pulling my ponytail or grabbing food off my plate when I'm not looking. My brother's name is Raymond. We call him Ray. His name means protector. And dad says he should be keeping me, his little sister, safe. But mostly he is just bossy and nosy. And sometimes he treats me like I am a glass thing that could break. He is always telling me, can't do this, you shouldn't do that. 
Maybe because I am two years younger than him. Maybe because I am a girl. Maybe because he doesn't know the meaning of my name. How tough I really am. Maybe he doesn't realize I can do and be anything. Then it's time to go outside for recess. Brandon, Marcus, and the boy with glasses, who I never talk to, are splashing around in puddles and stomping in the mud. They race each other up the monkey bars. I walk over to join the climbing, but before I can get there, the substitute teacher says to me, why don't you go over there, sweetheart, and points to the swings and the slide. I'd rather stay here to climb a mountain, I say. No, thank you. And keep walking to the monkey bars. The substitute teacher follows me. And that's when I realized it wasn't a suggestion or a question. It was a demand. I really think it'll be safer if you stay off the monkey bars. Besides, you and Brandon might need a break from each other. I'll stay out of Brandon's way, I say, and I don't think it's dangerous. I play on them all the time. I bet I can even climb faster than those boys. Just then, Brandon shouts out, you can't beat me, and he jumps off, down, showing off. I bet a pack of green apple Jolly Ranchers that you can't beat me. Let's race. Race? Yeah, last one to the pole has to buy the winner candy. He points to the tetherball pole across the playground. I think about it. There's a small crowd forming, and now I feel like I have to say yes. Like I have to prove to the substitute teacher that I can play whatever I want and with whomever I want. I don't like Jolly Ranchers, I tell Brandon. When I win, you have to buy me a Twix. <laughs> prefer Twix to Jolly Ranchers too. I look over at Kiki, one of my best friends. She smiles and gives us the countdown. On your mark, get set, go! I hear our friends cheering, but mostly I hear the sound of my breath huffing and puffing in and out, in and out. My feet slap the pavement and I run as pavement and I run as fast as I can. Brandon is beating me, but not by much. I move my arms through the air, forcing myself to go faster. I catch up. Then, just like I knew I could, I start running faster than Brandon. By a lot. I'm winning. I am winning. The pole is close, and if I stretch my arm out far enough, I'll reach it. I run a few more steps, and then... When I go to put my right foot down, something happens. My right foot doesn't touch pavement. The way my running foot usually touches, touches pavement, instead it stumbles and hiccups the way the, its way to the cold ground. I have fallen. Blood is trickling out of my knee and there's a stinging and pounding feeling all through my leg. Instead of stopping the race and seeing if I'm okay, Brandon runs right past me, tags the pole and says, yes, I beat you. You owe me a pack of Jolly Ranchers. No fear, Kiki yells. She was at the pole first. It's not her fault her shoe was untied. I don't even realize what's happened. My shoe is untied. I tripped over my shoelace. Don't be a sore loser, Brandon says. He is right, I tell Kiki. I never touched the pole. Dad picks us up from school, and the first thing he asks me is, what happened to your jeans? He looks at the hole, then back at me. It's a long story, I tell him. He doesn't press me. I'm sure Mom will. On the way home, I ask if we can stop at the counter at the corner store. When Dad says yes, I ask Ray, "Do you have two dollars?" He answers, "Why?" And this means he has two dollars. He's just not sure if he wants to give them to me. I hold out my hand. I'll pay you back. He gives me two dollars. Then we get to the corner store. 
I go right to the candy aisle and buy a pack of green apple Jolly Ranchers for Brandon and a Twix for me. That is the end of our first chapter. More tomorrow. Well, we'll see most of you tomorrow. Bye, guys.